yeah, groups in society. Now, when we talk about groupings in society, we may be tested on the following questions. What is a group? Can a Christian society be classified as a group? Or any other society? Not just, or a Muslim society be classified as a group? Because we are dealing with the groupings in society. Uh, can uh, these political parties who are jumping around be classified as uh, groups in society? What are the primary groups? Because they are primary and secondary groups. With examples, show you understanding of their beginning, process, and end. Define primary group. Discuss its social functions and lead them to, to something like church ministry or anything you want. It is not a question, it is a sample. Here we are not necessarily doing it for those who are doing uh, religious or theological areas. No, no, no. It's for everyone. But we have to give examples. Now, sociologists use the term group to describe many kinds of human association. The word group is occasionally used to mean a number of individuals gathered together in one place. While people waiting for a bus or train or plane or SGR are generally referred to as a group, scholars maintain that these are not really groups, but an aggregate. That is a collection of people. Another common explanation for the word group is people who share a particular attribute. This therefore means all cancer victims are a group, all welfare recipients are a group, all murderers are a group. ANCCI University, University is a group. All alcoholics are a group, to name just a few. In this as well, these are not groups or group, but each would be more accurately be described as category. Now let's go to group there down. Group is used to mean a number of individuals bound together in two ways. One, individuals who interact with one another in some organized fashion. For instance, people whom you joke with, okay? Uh, you can also talk of people who are sanctioned together, people with role expectations. The other one, members of a group share a consciousness of a kind or feeling of being bound together by common traits, common views, or common situations. For example, family members may see themselves bound together by their bloodline and family traditions. That is the way a group is. But of course, we we'll need to go build, go outside the box and redefine group in terms of the common the denominators or the common activities together, the common uh, boarding points. Note, however, that sociologists hold that aggregates can develop can develop into groups. For example, when people get things or issues in common to tackle, you can find yourself a group because you are brought together by the common uh, agenda. For us is education to all nations. That's why we are all nations. A-N, all nations. Yes. We want to join the community of all nations, scholars, the scholars of all nations. 
That makes us scholars of all nations. In general, out of aggregates and categories, groups may emerge wherein people, people interact and have conscience, consciousness of kind, of a kind. In summary, every one of us belong to a group or to a good number of social groups, each consisting of a set of people who cooperate for some common purpose or live together in one geographical area. According to one sociologist called E. Izewu, some groups have a very small number of members with very special objectives. Others have varied and wide objectives. In general, the groups to which a person belongs were there before he had joined them and exist even if he quits them. Now, concerning voluntary and involuntary groups, voluntary groups are those we join through our own choice and effort. For example, members of the Kenyan society might conceivably join a political party, a church, or occupation. In contrast, if voluntary groups are those, are those we are forced to join or those that we are automatically members of members of without being given a chance to choose. For example, becoming a pramba is a matter of choice, but in being middle age is not. Another example, when an individual enrolls in a university, is he joining a voluntary or involuntary group? Is it our choice and effort? Okay, open and closed groups. An open group is one in which virtually anyone can become a member. That's why it is an open group. For example, in the United States of America, all but a few can join Weight Watchers. Well, this is subject to having excess weight and the payment or dues. The closed group, on the other hand, is much more difficult to join. Some groups such as elite country clubs and the mafia are so exclusive that only a selected few can become members. So a group can be closed depending on what you are doing. I don't know whether Jehovah Witnesses are very keen in missiology or moving and reaching out, crossing the frontier to get more members. I need to stand there and find out whether they are. There are some of these new religious movements that are also crossed groups because the things they do hmm, are bad or are very dubious, to say the least. Quite a number, including spouse swapping. Very strange, bizarre things, bizarre things. Things that are uh, peculiar and very strange. There is also large and small groups. In some cases, small groups are better able to accomplish a certain purpose. Thus, most teachers will find it better to reach their goals in a small class. A good vicar or a priest in the Anglican, or, or you may talk of Lutheran or even Catholic, where we are vicars of Christ, particularly the Catholic, will divide this parish council's committee to improve the effectiveness of it. Dividing is like devolving, mm -hmm. so that you don't do everything, so that there is finance committee handling this, development committee handling this, fellowship committee handling this, and so on and so forth. Similarly, when you have a board of management of a secular school, we do not need to hear a principal doing everything. Yeah? Karibu tu muimbie, yeye ni kila kitu ndani ya yote. That is for Christ. No, 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 no. They are need to be a, a farm manager. We need to be disciplined manager outside the class, outside the, the, the teaching fraternity. There should be a parent in charge or a member of BOM in charge of discipline, in charge of outdoor activities. It should not be, the principal should not be the only one talking, talking and 
representing the school in the name of hiding under the, the, the TSC which sent that person. Because ministry also sent the BOM. So there's ministry and there is TSC. So you need to listen and uh, work with all those teams. Otherwise, uh, for us to be effective, we have to not do everything. That's why when we come next time, next is, uh, lesson, you find not just me talking, talking, talking. I'm just laying the foundation. Next time we, uh, we have will be about three of us tackling these courses here. That is what you see next time in next semester because it can't be one person, but there can be a, a vision carrier. There can be laying the foundation, okay? Laying the foundation does not mean you are there permanently alone. No, no, no. It is just for a while. And more, some of you who, who, who complete their doctorate, because we don't deal with the people who are not doctors here. We only deal. We are not proud people. We are dealing with the doctors for now. You still can help in this, the kind of work we are doing here. In many things, yes, in the supervision, after you complete, some are about to. In supervision, quite a number of supervision. Quite a number of areas that uh, some are good in, uh, good at. And they'll be very, very useful. So that is it. That's what I wanted to say on that other section. But on the other hand, let me talk about accomplish, accomplishing some goals will also necessitate large groups. Okay? And as, as I've noted, they share duties. Even in African traditional society, there was division of labor, or there is division of labor. There is a duty for women, although the westernization of Africa is posing a challenge. Even when Muturin goes to Mukuru and Yagadanga in Muranga, Christians are in arms, are coming out in arms to strike him and to say we are going to coronate another one. We have to coronate another person as Christians. There should be no quarrel about the two. There should be culture and the gospel should not be fighting. They should have a dialogue, not fighting. Why should you fight and you belong to the same God, to the same world? But I'm saying this, that uh, when it's a large group anyway, you also need to share duties. For example, an invading army would probably have a better chance for victory with millions of soldiers than with hundreds. So the bigger it is, we can achieve more. But it can be big and, am and amorphous, losing a sense of direction and not able to move far. If it's poorly managed, however big the group is, it will fail. If they lack creativity, it lacks critical thinking. It lacks innovativeness. It lacks problem-solving skills. Once they differ, they don't know how to solve problems. They just corrupt. They just scatter. Okay? They become disjointed. That is the way to kill a large group. Yes, because these people are assembling together as politicians, as whoever. But the moment they will get into issues that will cause division, you'll be surprised how they scatter because they are not trained. They never came here to be with us in this room to learn about problem-solving techniques. So sociology will talk about these large and small groups. But I wouldn't want to say a small group is manageable than a big one. Of course, the sense in which it is, a small group is more manageable. But if we are trained in problem-solving skills, no group, however big or small, will be an elephant, will be troubling in, when we are trying to manage it. We will manage it because we have basics in problem solving uh, strategies. Okay? Because generally, if you look at even major corporations, some are big, they have a huge capital. Okay? Yeah, they, they go far. The other one I want to talk about, because I can find there are many groups, there's vertical and horizontal groups. What about them? A vertical group consists of members from all walks of life, while a horizontal group consists predominantly 
of members from one social class. Okay? Aya. Concerning majority and minority groups, sociologists distinguish four groups when they consider both size and power. A dominant majority refers to a group of large size that possesses a high degree of power. A, a high degree of power. Number two, a su subjugated mass. A subjugated mass refers to a large group that has little power. That is, for example, during the time of apartheid in South Africa, blacks outnumbered whites, but they had little political economic power. Okay? Number three, an elite group is a small in size, or is small in size, yet it is powerful. For example, the whites in apartheid in South Africa were the elite group, yet their counterparts, the black majority, was subjugated. They had no voice. They had no say. Why should we talk about South Africa? In Kenya, we had our own form of apartheid before 1963. We used to call it Karaba. It was practically apartheid, but we did not use the word apartheid. We call, we call, call it Karaba. As Professor Zabron Dabudi says in his book on crossroads, uh, in some places, they put an inscription or some write-ups are made are near the door of the restaurant, which says, or crab, which says, Africans and dogs are not around, are not welcome. In other words, African people are crushed as dogs. They were categorized along the, the level of a dog. So you can come even if you are you were coming to have a cup of whatever or drink or whatever but don't carry the dog with you or come with a, a black man or woman it's not allowed so, so it was caraba you are bad okay uh, due to uh, the cara or makeup cara was an impediment uh, to the progress of kenyan society the colonial society the fourth one, the fourth point on majority and minority groups, is a minority group refers to a small group with little power. That's why it's called minority. The other one is in groups and out groups. An in group is a group with which an individual identity, one to which he or she belongs and gives allegiance. A person refers to fellow in, in group members as we. For example, we are good, brave, intelligent student of ANCCIU or feminists, Rotarians, or whatever it is. In contrast, an out group is a group to which the individual does not belong and with which he or she does not identify. Out group members are they and they are different from us. That's why we say uh, they versus us because they are out groups. Okay? So they, they are in group and out group. And out group can also be seen when you think of the Kenyan Karaba. Some people were reduced to out groups. Others were categorized as in groups. Now, there's also primary groups now. Sociologist Charles Houghton Curry originally defined a primary group as one where members develop close, personal, intimate, and enduring relationships. Family, neighbors, and work associates are examples of such groups. Members know one another well, greatly influence each other, and they greatly influence one another. And they feel closely related. Members of a primary group 
are aware that they belong to a group and that they have common interests and goals. In Africa, they can say a person is a person because of other persons. Mundu ni mundu, mundu wandu. Mutu ni mtu, kwa sababu ya watu. Umutu gumutu, babado. A person is a person because of other persons. The smallest yet the most important primary group is the family made up of a husband, wife, and their children. The other one is called nuclear family. The collective, the collective members in a village can also be called a primary group since it is possible for everybody living in a village to know one another and interact as occasions demand. Now, relationship in a group, in a primary group, relationship in a primary group, as Iseu tells us, may or may not involve brand relationship. For example, members of a cult know each other and interact with other, with one another, yet there is no brand relationship therein. The girl guides and the boy scouts detachment are good examples of primary groups. However, the nature of relationship existing between these members of the groups does not qualify them to be referred to as fully primary groups. They can be called quasi-primary groups. So strictly speaking, a primary group is characterized by one personal relationship as there is a face-to-face -face contact between members. Of course, that has to be revised in the age of COVID-19 where we must not meet face-to-face. -face. We can even use WhatsApp. We can use the Skype. We can use Google Meet. We can do what we are doing right now. And we still maintain our primary group because the kind of face-to-face -face is through the media of communication or the, uh, the, the science and technology that is provided these days. Number two, a primary group is characterized by the intimate nature of relationship within the group. Yes, they vary one another. Umekua wapi? Where were you? Where did you get lost? Okay, what are the challenges they are in? Is it the network problem or what? Number three, the small group. I mean, a primary group is char characterized by the small group. So most of these primary groups, are strictly speaking, are not very big groups. They are not amorphous groups. But we are not trying to say that uh, a, a big group cannot be primary. But you note that the smaller the group, the more chances they have of uh, being able uh, to of being able to, uh, to to be together, to keep together, the smaller they are, it's easy to know even some everybody's name, by name. But when you have a group of about 1,000 people, there, there, are kids, there are chances that if you are leading such a group, you may not know all of them. And even within themselves, they may not easily know one another. So a group, a group is called primary because it gives the individual the earliest experiences of social participation and unity. That is why the family is usually referred to as the primary agency of socialization because the individual comes into contact with the family first and rather they form a comparatively stable and permanent source from which a complex relationship may be formed. Now, as a characteristic, it is important to point out that not all primary groups are so harmonious, for some members may act indifferently to want or actually hate each other. An example is boy daughter may experience a lack of affection from Carla's father. What I'm saying is, um, it is important to point that not all primary groups are so harmonious. I'm saying even at, in those so-called primary groups, 
uh, if they are critical and creative thinking, for example, uh, of course, some, some lack, some will have it. Those who are very crit creative and critical, they may go very far. They may prosper. They may do very well because they will be able to move forward. But those who remain uh, neutral, not caring so much, they will remain bitter with the others. They will start, you know, releasing certain harmful wants, making bad, you know, insinuations, making insinuation rather. There will be some tension, even within primary groups, when you have people who are not very hardworking. Even when you are in class, you, are, you say you are a primary group, some don't want to do the term paper, some have already finished, some are working very hard. Those who do it the last minute, they feel like they are being harassed. And the, the harmony of that group now is hurt by those who do it the last minute because they will feel molested, hurt. Sometimes they may do what psychologists will talk about as projection. They start projecting to naonewa, to naonewa, sababu ya hii. They create reasons which are projective and not real because they are cooked reasoning or imagined reasoning, which is not the actual thing. There is not the actual thing, but it will hurt the primary group because the comments have that injurious effect. Now, in conclusion to this section, it is important to point out that we are all members of many primary groups. We engage in personal, confiding relations with our family and with some of our fellow workers, fellow colleagues, uh, our in-groups, members and club members, all that. Now, the last one, the secondary group. In looking at this secondary group, we say that in addition to the primary group to which we belong, we are members of a great many secondary groups. Yes, yeah, so many, even the WhatsApp is providing so many secondary groups. Yes, my friend is wending somewhere. I found my name there in his group. Another one is buying a car. He thought we should be part of it. I have accepted to be part of it. Another one is raising fees for his education. I became part of it through WhatsApp. Another one is uh, having, you know, their mourning, their bereavement. I accept them to be part of their, you know, their group that is mourning their, their parent. Another one is a colleague who is in hospital. Yes, I'm part of it. We are in so many secondary groups. Okay? So many secondary groups. And we must work out a way of being there. Because you cannot run away from these groups unless you are not in Africa. And not, you don't know, we are not in Leonard Descartes' philosophy of cogito ego sum, I am, therefore I exist. We are, I am, because you are. And because you are, therefore I am. That is cognitas ego sumus, that is Latin, to say we are in a community. We are not in Europe, Europe where people are individuals. We are a community, my friend. So we are in, we are cognitas ego sumus. Yes, we are in a community. You cannot run away from these secondary groups because how can you survive? We, you never survive unless you live out, live, go out of Africa. Even those people from West who come to Africa and they live with us, they make Africa their new home. They find themselves behaving like us. They make condemn us when they are there. But when they come here, stay for five days, five years, two years, not even five, a year, they start changing to becoming communalistic like us, socialistic like us, communalistic like us. They can't escape it because it is embedded in our culture. You must spare a place for your friends. Some are not even very helpful to you, but you must spare something. Otherwise, you are a member of this society. It may be uh, painful when you are, being, you are known by so many people. And so many people, being former students, being former colleagues, you have moved all over, so you have so many friends. They need you. 
and you need them. It may become too much when all of them have issues. Now, in the secular groups, individuals act to one to one another in rather impersonal, superficial, and utilitarian ways. For example, when we interact with a waiter in a hotel, a salesperson or a boss at work, or a boss at work, we usually do not disuse, discuss, not disuse, discuss our bedroom behavior, uh, or even about, don't discuss our spouse eating problem. We don't go that personal, okay? In such situations, our personal problems, our personal feelings are irrelevant to say a situation of salesman versus customer for our actions are directed toward reaching utilitarian objectives such as a waiter ordering a meal, a mail carrier collecting postage due, or a salesperson filling out a business form. So what am I trying to say about these things I've just mentioned? That there are these secular groups that may be created out of, okay, a customer a vendor or something through, uh, it can be created through waiter, you know, somebody and a consumer, a consumer in a hotel. That can come and can create, in a sense, a secondary group. So group, secondary groups keep coming and they will not, they always be there. Otherwise, they are more than the, the primary groups. In contrast, that doesn't mean there is any group we have discussed that has no challenge. There are a lot of challenges in all groups, but when we are critical and creative, we will be able to address the cutting edge problems that keep recurring, the recurrent problems in all these groups, because you don't expect these groups to be angels, to be groups of angels. Not easy, not easy. Members of a primary group expect to feel valued and receive satisfaction of course, this is in contrast that with the, the secular group, that members of a primary group expect to feel valued and receive satisfaction from one another. While well, secular groups, however, it can evolve into primary group for if each week an individual visits the same small restaurant, she may come to know one waiter quite well and eventually the two may form a close relationship. I saw somebody who was going to a hotel many times. She was served by a lady, a lady. And then she ended up marrying that lady. Yo urafiki ni ya hotelini tu. Na imeishi mpaka leo tunaona inaendelea. We thought ni urafiki ya hotelini, but we thank God. It is working. I'm a witness. Conclusion on this, before we move to uh, the very last one, on peer group. As a first century essayist, John Donne wrote, no man is an irat, no man is an irat. Entire of itself, every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main, okay? In other words, he used sexist language when he said, no man. He should have said, no human being is an irat entire of itself, every person is a piece of the continent, a part of the, of, of the main, not man, of the main, a part of the main. You are part of the bigger picture. So nobody, nobody is uh, an island. We are always there because you are, and because I am, therefore you are, and because you are there, I am. Because you are a student, I'm a student, there is a teacher. And because there's a teacher, I'm a student. And because there's a parent, there is a child. And because there's a child, there is a parent. And because there's government, there are people who are served by that government. And because there are people served by that government, there is a government. So it means that this is what we call in biology, symbiotic relationship. There is what we call in philosophy and the general English usage, interdependence, where you cannot do without me, I can't do without you, 
we are tied together in a mysterious way. Human beings are tied together in a mysterious way. Societies are brought together in a mysterious way. So we shall never stop studying sociology because it's all about society. And society is about people who are always tied together by certain historical social happenings. We always be tied together because of this. So groupings in society are very, very, very essential in moving the society forward. You not do without these groups. All we need is to know how to manage these groups. If they are poorly managed, some become terrorists and terrorizing people. Some become religious fundamentalists and extremists and become new religious movement. And they start hurting society like they did in Western Uganda where the so-called pastor Joseph Kibwatere, Kibwatere, a millennialist, member of the so-called millennium uh, new religious movement, NRM. He told his adherents, sell all your properties wherever they are and come to the church. Sell your cows, we meet Christ. Christ is coming after 1,000 years. That is all millennialists talk about. After 1,000 years, there will be rapture, the end of the world. The world will not be there, so prepare. And they even invoke Christ, yet these are not uh, conventional religious society. They are not really religious people as such. But they talk in that uh, Christological appeal and confuse you for a serious religious group. But they are nothing but cults. Mm, they are con. They are con artists. They have powerful speakers. But at the end of the day, they con you. So what did Joseph Kibwatere do in Western Uganda in, on that first December 1989? What he did, he told all the people before that first December 1999 that Jesus Christ was coming the mid, on the midnight of that first December 1999. Therefore, they need to come for and receive him in their church. And because these cultic groups have very powerful and beguiling speakers, those uh, demagogues of sorts, oratorical, powerful oratorical demagogues, people who can speak and take you to where they want you to go, even if they want to put you in, in, put you in a box, the way Adolf Hitler would do in Germany of 1930s. Good speaker, but bure kabisa. Not useful at all because you lead people astray at the end of the day. Some of these NRMs, which are chaotic and dangerous to society because they have very dangerous teachings. Joseph Kibotere told these people, Kujeni, come on that first, sell everything. They sold cows, farms, and everything. They came and camped eh, within the one acre of, uh, uh, farm that where the church is. And they stayed there with their children crying. And you can see when it reached the evening of that first, they screamed, Welcome, welcome, Jesus. Eh? We are boarding with you. Jesus, come, we'll board with you. We'll go with you. And they were joyful, waiting for the Savior, Jesus Christ. But then Jesus did not come. When he failed to come the following day, 2nd, uh, January 2000, my friend, they were told, Jesus wants you to repent again and again. The money they brought to the pastor, they started buying food for them. Till it was over. Now, the, the next thing he told them, the last thing, when it, the people started dying with, you know, with the time. Some because of malnutrition, others because of general hunger. You know, also a lot of challenges that goes with such conmanship. Then, when it, for those who are alive by March 2000, he told them, let me tell you, God has spoken. Now let us take poison. You die very quickly, you go to heaven. He gave them, and they said, yes, everything. Because they were already troubled, some were already sickly, some were hungry. Even if you are given poison, you take, you will take it. And they took it. And they, quite a number died. They were buried around within the church compound. And uh, some refused to could not die. You know, there are those people, even if you give them poison, they can't die. Some can go even 200 years, 300 years old like Noah in the Bible. They can't die. 
Even if you give them poison, they can't die. So the man came with machetes, pangas, and started thrashing them till they died. He came with his, his team. They started killing those members of the congregation, telling them, you can't go to heaven until you die. You can't go to heaven until you die. Then you spike them till they are dead. You strike them dead. Some were not even dying even when they are hit. But they were hit until they died. By the time the government of President Museveni knew that this cultic group is really doing harm, mass killings. My friend, these guys are moved far. They are left the scene. I don't know which forest they went to. Maybe the DLC forest, so, and maybe joined, joined the Nguerira uh, armies, and I don't know. You can't tell where they went. So you can see some of these groups, and if you don't have criticality and creativity, if you are not creative and critical, whatever group you are in, whether it's a parliamentary group, whether it is a religious group, and you are not critical, you are following everything like a sheep to the slaughter. Eh? You are just saying we have a shepherd. It has an issue. It has an issue. There are challenges. So, one scholar by name Orandere Taiwo has noted that because every child in the peer group has an equal status with other children, there exists an atmosphere of freedom in which each child easily runs the ways of the world from the other members. Although all, all members of the peer group are equal in status, they do not always perceive things in the same way. Neither do they participate in group life uniformly. That's a question. So to end this topic and the course, the, the course today, allow me if, if there are no quick question to continue that other section and pose this question. What is a group? Of course, I know we have gone through them, but we can still pose the question and ask, what is a group? Can a Christian community be classified as a group? Can you explain? Okay. First, going back to what we have done, like we are doing a recap and a revision of what we have done very quickly, because we are we have only 10 minutes now, and I want to, to finish before that time so that somebody can ask questions. Group means an individual who interacts with one another in some, in some organized ways. It may also mean individuals who share a consciousness of a kind or feeling of being bound together by common traits or by common issues or situations. For example, transitions. Yeah, political transition keeps people together. As they think they don't want this president or this MP, uh, they, it can keep people together. Okay? Now, church may be seen also to an extent as both primary and secondary group. Primary, if you are so, those who are close, particularly the leadership there, the church councils, but secondary in the sense that all people, irrespective of their, their strong strength of faith, are members. So um, church interacts in an organized fashion. That makes it, in a sense, a group. Our common denomination in church is Christ. In mosque, our common denominator is Allah is God. Muhammad is his prophet. So that is the thing that grows us together, ties us together brings us together, makes us a group, one group. And we aim to have life eternal, that is afterlife, an afterlife. Bible is our point of reference. We sing songs that revolve around our creator. We preach, teach, yes, those things that revolve around our faith. That commonality of a church, you have to differentiate between church, cult, and sect. Because I'm a nothing but a con artist. 
Some are not church at all. They are just using the, uh, the, 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 the name church or the phrase church in order to build their own interest. Number two, Christian community can also be seen as a group or can be classified as a group because Christian community shares a consciousness. Okay? You may talk about we are bound together by the partaking of wine, bread, remembering the, the Savior. This partaking makes us brothers. That is corrective consciousness. There is number three. It becomes a community or is sometimes a primary group. When we think of fellowships among uh, the, the fellowshipers, the others, think of Hebrew uh, uh, 10, 24 to 25, where they are reminded by the writer of Hebrew, continue meeting and fellowshipping, continue being together. Think of uh, when they are told, 25b, that encourage one another is that the big day is coming. Continue encouraging one another. Now, if they are really encouraging one another, they are taking the Hebrew teachings uh, as it is, then that's a primary group because they are encouraging one another. People who encourage one another are not good at criticizing one another. Even if the other person makes a mistake, they tell him, wake up, brother, we are together. Wake up, sister. The journey is not, uh, you are not alone in this journey. We are journeying together till the promised land, till we get there. Yes, we are journeying together. You are not alone. We are not alone. You are not on your own. You have sisters and brothers in us. So you have a problem or no problem or you, whatever you, the position you are in, whatever situation you are in, we are together. That's a primary group who fellowship. We become confident. We can share secrets. And don't tell those other fellows who are not in our group. Out group will not know what we are saying, what our secrets that binds us together. Nobody will know. Nobody, nobody will know. Yes, we share feelings. When you are hurt, I don't celebrate. You don't celebrate when I'm hurt. But you can see some we want the fellows who work with you, but they are spying on you so that they have something negative to say about you. That is an out group coming to, uh, to get uh, posing as a member of the in group or primary group. And that is dangerous even in working in businesses. You find the people who spy for your enemies and they want to come and have something to tell, something nasty, something uh, embarrassing, something to pull you down, to make you appear useless, not useful. They have mastered that craft of reducing others into nothing. Those are out groups. But in groups, they are able to cross, cross one another, to tell one another, zip up. You forgot when you are coming to work, zip it up. They tell you, you have uh, not come, uh, Made your hair today, my friend. Let's let's just run and get out of this big group. And I take you to the barber shop. I don't want to make politics out of your your unkempt hair. I want to make you to clothe you and make you a person and enjoy the kingship, the kingdom of God. When you are here on earth, you enjoy it with me. So that is the way of a primary group. But a primary group. An, an, an out group will do the other way around. Munasema kiereweke wengine wanasema tanga tanga. Munasema tuende bere wanasema tuende nyuma. Munasema tulete katiba ingine wengine wanasema ni ya ni ni. What for? So they talk, you know, they, they don't talk to each other. They talk at each other because there is out group and in group. So within the primary group, there is in-group in a sense that we share many things in common. We can counsel one another. We can help one another. We can uh, even form secular groups with other people and join them in those other groups. 
we will not mind because we know what the distinction, the distinctive things that makes us live together, work together, and uh, fight the battles in the physicians of life together. So let's talk about church as a voluntary group. We are about to end this, so no problem. We are about to. We are just about to. Church as a voluntary group. And sometimes in voluntary, especially if we underwent, in fact, baptism, it can be involuntary and also voluntary. There are those who are baptized when they were young and brought into the group. Hey, you are made a member of this church by the confession of another person, meaning you are not a voluntary member. You are a member, but you are brought there. Okay? There are those other families that coerce people. You can't join the Catholic. We are Protestants. Or you can't join the Protestants. We are Catholics. The Protestants are not mature enough. They are, not, they are jumping all over. They are not doctrinally stable. I've heard people saying so. Even it, that's how it was before 1965, during the Vatican II. It is when, for the first time, uh, the protest, the, the Catholics stopped saying, Nura, nura Ecclesiam Nura Salus. And that is outside Latin for outside the Catholic Church. There is no salvation. There is no church. All those so-called Protestants are wayward members. But thank be to God, the greatest pope who has ever lived, in, as far as I'm concerned, John Paul II, led the people in bringing people together. And because of that, we see that together the Catholics and Protestants do common things. Even J their JPC and NCK in Kenya, they work together for democratic change. Even at Ufungamano, they are there with others. Before then, before 1965 Synod, or the so-called Vatican II, between 1962 to 1965, when that Vatican uh, was done, that Synod was done, they were on their own, kept on their own. Church as a small group. So small committees with the PCC tackles issues for the rest of the congregation. There is a time when the church becomes a small group. The church is a vertical group. When it, it becomes a vertical group when it consists of members from all walks of life. The church also becomes an in-group uh, because a person refers to, to a fellow person as, as in-group members. In the in-group membership as we, the brother of Christ, was sent in for, to unite us all. So you find we have commonality that we have noted earlier. The last one is, some see the church as a secular group. It comes second, first, like an insurance company. Just give me my baptism certificate so that I can get my ID. We have no other business, intimate business, with the church, with you. So to them, it's a secular thing. It is not a very serious matter. It is just secondary. So it's a grouping society. We need to also think of school. A school, a group, how, to what extent are schools groups or universities, are they groups? Can we look at them sociologically as groups in society? This is not exclusive, uh, exhaustive. We have only given a summary of what a group is in sociology. Thank you very much. More questions now.